Hey, welcome to Master Math. I'm the Math Mutt, and I'm here to remind you of a couple of things that'll help you get more out of these Master Math lessons. Be sure you know where your pause button, your forward button, and your reverse button is. If you find you're losing concentration, hit your pause button and take a break. If I go over something and you don't understand it, hit your back button and go back and listen to that section again. And when you come to a you try it problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Now let's learn some math. All right, today we're going to talk about ratios. And you're going to discover that you really already understand ratios. You learned it a couple of years ago when you learned to, to divide. Let's explore this idea. Let's find out if you already understand ratios. Let's say you and two friends go hiking and you have six apples to share. How many apples should each of you get? Hmm. Think you can do that? I bet you can. You got six apples and if you divide that by the three people you're gonna get two apples per person. You just divided six over three and you found that equaled two to one. Two per two apples per one person. Two apples per person. Two apples per person, that's a ratio. Two per one. Six apples per three people. That's a ratio. Six to three. I can write that a number of different ways. I can say six apples per three people, or six apples divided by three people. Or I could write it and say it six apples to three people. Or I could simplify that two apples per one person or per each person. Or I could simplify it and say two apples to one person. Or I could read it and say it's six to three or it's two to one. And that's all it is. That's a ratio. That's a ratio. That's a ratio. It's just the division that you've been doing for years. And there's a rule here. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities using division. You already know this stuff. Let's say you got in your car and the speedometer said you were going 45 miles per hour. 45 miles per hour. Well, you know that that means 45 miles per one hour, and you could change that per to a division sign. It's 45 miles divided by one hour. Well, you also know enough about fractions to know that if I've got 45 over 1, I can rewrite that as 45 times 2 over 1 times 2 because if I multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same number it's still equivalent to the original fraction. Once again I could multiply the top and the bottom by 3 and I still got an equivalent fraction. Or I could do the same thing with 4. So I could rewrite this 45 miles per 1 hour equals 90 miles per two hours equals 135 miles per three hours equals 180 miles per four hours. And that makes sense to you because if you're going 45 miles per hour in two hours you're gonna go 90 miles. 90 miles per two hours because we just multiplied both the top and the bottom of the miles per hour by two and one hour became two hours and 45 miles became 90 miles. And we could do the same thing with 3 or with 4. And we could write these as ratios in any of number of ways. 90 over 2 is a perfectly good ratio, but another way to write that would be 90 colon 2, which we would read 90 to 2. We would read this 45 to 1 we'd read this 135 to 3. Well let's say 
you've got a soccer team and there are four boys per two girls on this soccer team there's four boys and two girls well that means that the ratio of boys to girls is four boys to two girls and I could write it with the colon or I could write it with a division sign four to two and just like you can simplify a fraction 4 over 2 can be simplified a ratio can be simplified too if I simplify 4 over 2 it simplifies to 2 over 1 now because it's a ratio I can't get rid of that over 1 because I want to make sure I understand that it's 2 to 1 I want to be able to read it correctly 2 to 1 and I can simplify that ratio 4 to 2 and make that 2 to 1 as well okay we've got this soccer team and we've got a ratio of boys to girls of 4 to 2 or 2 to 1 we've got a ratio of boys to girls of 2 to 1 well what if you needed 14 boys on the soccer team and you wanted to keep that same ratio of boys to girls could you figure out how many girls would be on the soccer team sure you could you know that the ratio is 2 to 1 and you want to have 14 boys. It's two boys to one girl. And you want to have 14 boys. So what do you have to do to 2 to make it 14? You have to multiply it by 7. So I could change this, this ratio or this fraction to 2 times 7 over. And if I'm going to multiply the top by 7, i got to multiply the bottom by 7. So it's over 1 times 7. And 2 times 7 equals 14. And 1 times 7 equals 7. So my ratio of girls or of boys to girls would lead me to believe that if I had 14 boys I better have 7 girls. Here's another way you could do this. You could say that the ratio of boys to girls, 2 to 1, has to equal the ratio if you had 14 boys. So if you had 14 boys, how many girls would you have to still keep a ratio of 2 to 1? Now this is algebra and some of you may find this a little bit over your head, but some of you may dig it, so let's try it. One of the ways you can do this is what's called cross product. And in a cross product, you multiply uh, uh, numerator times denominator and set it equal to the other numerator times the, the other denominator. So I've got 2 times x or 2x equals 1 times 14 or 14. If 2x equals 14, I can divide the 2x by 2 to get rid of the x or to get rid of the 2 and I have to divide the other side of the equation by 2 also and I solve x equals 7. Got the same answer, 7 girls, 7 girls. All right, we understand now that a ratio is just a fraction. It's just a division problem. Can we compare ratios? Well, yeah, sure we can. Let's, let's explore how we might do that. Let's say we've got a ratio of apples to oranges. So let's say we've got three ratios of apples to oranges. In one case, we've got two apples for three oranges. In another case we've got three apples to four oranges. And in the third case we got four apples to five oranges. Well, we know we can rewrite those ratios as fractions. Two to three becomes two over three. And we know that I can convert a fraction into a decimal and we all probably also understand that it's usually either easier to order numbers if they're in decimal form than are in fraction form. So let's convert all those to decimals. 2 over 3 becomes 0.67. Now, which is biggest? 0.67 or 0.8? Well, 0.8 is bigger than 0.67. And what that's telling us is we have more apples per orange if the ratio is 0.8 than if the ratio is 0.67. That's really 0.8 to 1 apples to oranges. There is 0.8 apples per each orange in, in this 4 to 5 ratio. In the 2 to 3 ratio, there is 
six seven apples per orange so we have more apples for each orange in this situation than we do in this situation well let's say we had six oranges if we had six oranges how many apples would we have we'd have 0.67 times six or four apples in this ratio if we had six oranges then we'd have 0.75 times six or four and a half apples. And in the last ratio, if we had six oranges, we'd have 0.8 times six apples, or 4.8 apples. So if we want to compare ratios, the easiest thing to do is to convert the, ra the ratio into a decimal. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Oh, aren't they cute? Yes, they're just adorable. And what is the ratio of cats to dogs? Well, this is real simple. How many cats do you see? Two. How many dogs do you see? One. The ratio is two cats to one dog. 2 to 1, or 2 over 1. Write this ratio in its simplest form, 12 to 60. Well, first of all, we know we can convert that to a fraction, 12 over 60. And can we simplify that fraction, 12 over 60? Well, sure we can. Because if I divide the top of that fraction by 12, I get a 1. And if I divide the 60, the denominator of that fraction by 12, 12 goes into 65 times. So I can simplify the fraction to 1 per 5, or 1 over 5. And I could rewrite that 1 colon 5, 1 to 5. cookies cookies I love cookies and my cookie recipe calls for two cups of flour and five ounces of chocolate chips and I'm gonna use 20 ounces of chocolate chips how much flour do I need well I know my ratio is two cups of flour per five ounces of chocolate chips so if I'm gonna use 20 ounces of chocolate chips how many cups of flour do I need well, let's see. If I got a 5 over here and I need to make it a 20, what do I have to do? I've got to multiply that side of the equation by 4. 4 times 5 ounces equals 20 ounces. But if I'm going to multiply the denominator by 4, I got to multiply the numerator by 4. So 4 times 2 equals 8. And the answer is you'd need 8 cups of flour if you're going to use 20 ounces of chocolate chips. This one's easy. We're just supposed to find the ratio that describes the height of the right red triangle to the height of the blue triangle. Well, the height of the red triangle is 10, and the height of the blue triangle is 15, so the ratio is 10 to 15. And I can simplify that. The 10, I can reduce to 2 by dividing it by 5, and if I divide the 15 by 5, I get 3, so my ratio is 2 to 3. Now one thing you need to remember is that they're telling you the order that they want those numbers in. It's asking for the ratio of the red to the blue. So I have to put the red number first and the blue number second. If I said that was 15 to 10, I'd be wrong. It's 10 to 15 or 2 to 3. Well that's our lesson on ratios. I don't think you're going to find them too hard, and I think when you go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet, you'll be able to do most of those problems. And then you'll want to go to MasterMath and, and take the online quiz to see how well you really understand this stuff. And then 
you're going to want to come back to Master Math again real soon and learn even more math. See ya.